Hi, Chris with RC Worst here, and since our product video on the Square D pressure switches, we've received some questions on how to adjust the switch's pressure settings. So remember, before attempting any adjustments, be sure to turn off the breaker or disconnect power going to the switch or to the pump. You can find the factory preset settings inside the cover or on the box of the pump. This particular one is preset to 3050. So that would be the pump turns on at 30 PSI and off at 50. If you have a submersible pump, it's most likely going to be set to 4060 because that's more common with, with the submersible pumps. And uh, you'll even find some jet pumps, usually smaller horsepower or uh, some centrifugals more focused on irrigation that run on a 2040 split. You'll find most pressure switches operate with a 20 PSI or 20 pound differential. Adjusting the center nut will raise or lower the range, so you could potentially increase or decrease the range of that 4060 or 3050, I'm sorry, that we're preset with. So by tightening this middle set screw, we're actually increasing or raising the pressure by whatever amount, depending on the turns that we do here. This particular switch is rated about two to three PSI for every full rotation clockwise and that would increase the pressure 2 to 3 psi. The smaller nut on the left hand side adjusts the differential which actually only affects the high end pressure. So for example on this 3050 configuration if I were to tighten this or go clockwise we would be increasing the 50. So 51, 52, 53. It increases depending on the number of times that you turn it. So with this particular one, it's a lot less adjustable than the large one. And a lot of pressure switches have a range that this will work. Sometimes it's five, 10, or 15 PSI, depending on the switch. Let's go ahead and run the, this, particular, this pump through a cycle so you can see how the pressure switch operates. And uh, we'll also see what's going on with the pressure gauge. So you can see the pressure's dropping. Once it hits that 30 PSI mark, the pump is gonna engage and it's gonna build up to our 50 PSI and then shut off. So let's say uh, we don't have enough pressure in the house, so we wanna operate at a higher level of pressure. Let's go ahead and adjust this. And what we wanna do for, for this example is we want to run at 60 PSI, so we want to increase this factory set switch to a 60-40 split. So when I say 2 to 3 PSI per turn, that's going to basically be 3 to 4 turns for us to increase it. So we have the breaker shut off, so now we'll get on here and uh, do 3 turns. 1, 2, three, and I'll actually just do f three and a half, and we'll see what, what we get for a cycle. So the pressure's dropping. And you can see that at three and a half, we've actually dropped to 40 PSI, and then the pump shut off at 60 PSI, just as we expected. Extremely easy to change that adjustment. Now, let's say for instance that we want to adjust the, the differential, which is not necessarily something that you want to adjust unless you've got a very specific reason to do so, because like I said, it only impacts the high pressure or the uh, shut off pressure of the pump. So there's very few applications where you want to shorten the cycle, but we'll show you how it interacts in this particular configuration. So we'll uh, actually back this no, we'll leave that one alone. We're going to take this one here and we're going to turn it just uh, three full turns. One, or that's a half. One, two, three. What this is going to do is give us actually a longer cycle, so the pump runs longer and also shuts off at higher than 60 PSI. I would guess about 65, 64, somewhere in there. And it's because I turned it clockwise. Well, the pressure's falling. 
and we're at about 40 psi. The pump continues to build pressure and about 66 actually. So that was about, uh, what was that, uh, three and a half turns or three turns I believe that I did on that one. So three turns upped it about five, six PSI. So it's almost two PSI per turn. Now for a quick recap. Here are some reasons why you may want to adjust your pressure switch settings. For example, your surface pump is located at a lower elevation than the home or area that you need to supply water to. Raising the range will compensate for the pressure loss of the hill. Have more pressure in the shower or faucets. If you have low pressure in the second story of your home, in some cases increasing the pressure of the pump can compensate for that. If your switch is not operating like it once was, here are a few tips and things that you can check. Sediment or debris built up in the nipple which connects the pressure switch to the main water line. Sediment or debris build up in the switch's screen which can affect the diaphragm's performance. Or perhaps your switch could have gone out of adjustment over time because of a temperature change or aging metal springs. It is a mechanical device so it's always good to check it from time to time. Anytime you are working with the switch, it is important to be sure to turn off the power to the pump in addition to draining the system if you do need to remove the switch itself. Here's a quick recap of the range. This is the adjustable center nut on the pressure switch. Turn clockwise to increase both the cut on and off pressure. Turn counterclockwise for a lower cut on and off pressure. Again, the general rule of thumb is one full turn is about two to three PSI. This is the recommended adjustment if you need to increase the system operating pressure. A quick recap on the differential. This one is also turned clockwise in order to raise the cut off pressure. Again, the differential only adjusts the off pressure or the high side of the pressure switch. You can turn the nut counterclockwise to lower the cut off pressure. Uh, general rule of thumb, this uh, particular setting doesn't need to be adjusted other than for very specific applications. So unless you've got a reason to adjust it, uh, just avoid it. The spring that's used in the differential is a lot less forgiving than the spring that's used on the range or the primary adjustment, and so it can often be a lot more difficult to get it back to the factory settings. Here's this graphic once again, just to give you a visual representation of the range and the differential adjustments and how they affect the pressure settings on the system. So that's it. Hopefully we've answered all your questions about adjusting a pressure switch. And if we didn't, leave a comment below or give us a call. Thanks for watching.